my beloved and welcome to my today's message about an encounter with God. An encounter with God is the experience of seeing God or meeting God face to face or in the dramatic scene or name face of God. The scene or the location shows the awesomeness or nature of an encounter with God. This we can get from Genesis 32 verse 30. Here God's messenger in form of human was the same as God himself. Moreover, the fact that Jacob recognized to his amazement. For instance, in Hebrew thought the penalty for seeing God was actually dead. This we can get reference from Exodus 33 and verse 30. Yet Jacob passed through such an encounter with God, experienced it and survived. Furthermore, in the olden days or in the days of his grandfather Abraham, an encounter with God was commemorated in such a form of building an altar or naming of a well. Building an altar, we can get this from Genesis 12 and verse 7, when God first appeared to Abraham, commanding to move from his land to the promised land where he will bless him and make him a great name. And Abraham he obeyed God. There he erected the first altar there. The second one was also in form of naming a well. This you can get from Genesis 16 and verse 14. Jacob, before an encounter with God, his name was one who supplant, meaning a man who is deceitful in character. As you all know the story, Jacob deceived his brother Esau twice. The first deception was he took his birthright away from his uh, brother Esau for the sake of lentils because he was hungry. Therefore Esau despised his birthright and sold it to Jacob. The second incident was that while Isaac was old and was nearing his end or his death, he called Esau and instructed him to prepare him a meal such that he loved and he would bless Esau before his death. But because Rebekah loved Jacob more than Esau, he collaborated with his younger son Jacob and took the blessings of Esau away from him. Therefore, Jacob supplanted his brother twice and it grieved his brother Esau and he planned to kill his brother after the death of their father. But when Rebekah heard the words of Esau's son, he said she was not ready to mourn the two people at a go, mourning his husband Isaac who was nearing death and also after the death of Isaac, Esau promised to kill Jacob and mourning again his son Jacob. So he advised his son Jacob to run away to his brother Laban in Haran so that the thing that he had done to his brother, he may forget and calm down of the anger. This we can get from Genesis 27. So Jacob runs away to Padan Aram to the uncle Laban in the form of going to get a wife there. Esau had married two Canaanite women and they were a threat to Rebecca. So they advised him because of what he had done to his brother supplanting him twice. So it was as an excuse that he was going to take a wife from his brother Laban in Padan Aram, but yet he was running away from the presence of his brother Esau. Moreover, there was first an encounter with God when he ran away to, from his brother Esau. As he traveled Haran, he met the place where his grandfather had erected the first altar to the Lord. As the servant of God, Apostle John Kimani said, 
in the last uh, conference that was in Ruitru, there is a power in dedication. When we dedicate something, the presence of God dwells there, such that this is the place that was ordained or dedicated by their grandfather Abraham. But the moment his presence was there, the angels descended to heaven. They did not ascend, meaning they were present there to go and report to God that there is somebody in that place. So after ascending, they descended again and it was an vision that Jacob saw in a dream and God talked to him and also God fulfilled the promises that he had spoken to their grandfather Abraham that he'll bless him, he'll make him a great name and a great nation and his family will be given that place as an inheritance of his generation after. That was the first experience and Jacob would say that there was none other than the place was holy and uh, at the house of God and the gate of heaven. This we can get the reference from Genesis 28 10 to 17. But beloved in this life, or I've also talked about what goes around to comes around in the story of David and his family and also the story of Abimelech, the son of Gideon, and Jotham, his younger son, who he proclaimed a curse and it came to pass. So Jacob had deceived his brother Esau twice but what he planted he also was deceived he went to haran or paran aram and lived with his uncle laban and he worked and he labored tirelessly to get the first wife rachel whom he loved the second daughter of laban but it happens the night when she was to go to the wife he was happy that he, he was sleeping with Rachel. But in the morning when he woke up, he was deceived. The woman whom he was given first was Leah, the first daughter of Laban. Because according to them, the, the younger daughter see the first daughter. So therefore they gave Leah instead of Rachel. And he had to perform the obligation of Leah as the first wife. Then after a week is when he was given Rachel as the second wife. But he worked again for another seven years and labored tirelessly to pay the dowry for Rachel as well. So in total, he worked or he labored tirelessly for 14 good years because of the spirit of deception that was in him. For him to acquire his wealth, he worked again another six years. So in total, Jacob worked labor tirelessly in Laban's place for 20 good years to acquire what he had. And because he had that supplement or the deceiving character in him, there were some tricks that he was doing when the cattle or the rams were nearing to give birth. That's how he was able to acquire much wealth and left Laban with just lame or deformed animals or deformed cattle, but the best one, he's the one who acquired them. In such a way that when he was living, he also ran away because he was a runner. Deceived after that, he runs away. That was his character before. He stole away from Laban, his uncle and the father-in-law in secret when Laban was not around with his two daughters and grandchildren because of the spirit of deception that was in him. This you can get from Genesis 31, the story we get there. So he ran away from his brother Esau for 20 good years. Again, he runs away from his uncle Laban. And where he was going, he was in a great distress and he was very much afraid and terrified of coming to meet again his brother Esau such that because God is merciful and because he was the one who received the blessing and not his brother Esau, God had to prepare him. God had to have an encounter with him so that he may transform him from a deceiver to a status of championship. So he wrestled with God. He was strengthened and he had the courage and the audacity to meet his brother Issue after an encounter 
with God. Now he was no, no longer a deceiver, but the one who strives or the one who prevails with God. And he also had to encounter the name of the, the site as a conflict and memory of a divine encounter with God. In, in chapter 32 and verse 30 of the Genesis, the Hebrews panel all face to face with God and and more dramatic description of the confrontation. In, in Hebrew thought, the penalty of seeing God face to face was actually death. As we had seen in Exodus 33 and verse 20, that was the penalty of seeing God face to face. And because God planned to transform him from a deceiver to a champion, he had to had an encounter with him and his life was preserved. He never saw death. And my parting shot is that for the Most High is awesome. He is a great king over all the earth. Psalms 47 and verse 2. This is our God. For him, or if he purpose or he plan to have an encounter with someone, even though we may have been called other names before but after the encounter with God God will transform us so when we have an encounter with God there must be a shift or a change from the negative form to its positive form a transformation must take place so let us decide to have an encounter with God so that he may transform our lives and take us to the peak of our destiny father i glorify the holy name for you are the most the most high awesome god the great king over all the earth there is nothing that is too hard for thee to perform and you are the one who knows our heart king of kings you knows our beginning from our end oh lord jesus i pray king of glory that you may have an encounter with each and every one of us this day Jehovah. may you transform our lives from the negative form to its positive form of king of king that that which the, the devil has put as a trap to us O oh lord may deliver us from it O oh king of kings and may lead us to that which you've ordained for us may we align with your purposes and they will for us O oh lord so spirit of god i welcome you that you may take charge you may lead us you may direct us and you may have your way in our lives and may we have the experiential encounter with you forever and ever. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I do pray, trust you, and believe you. Hallelujah. Amen. Until next time, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord do you good. Grace and favor from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Shalom.